question? Is anybody dreaming pills yet? Okay. Yeah. Now, thank you. And is anybody dreaming in color? Now, that's that. Okay. Now, I'll go into that. I'm going to go back into that in a minute. But I'll put a line under that. Yes. You can share, please. That's what it's about. Like, it was for a time I wasn't dreaming at all. Like, I just sleep and then need to curve back until I came to the adult because I started dreaming again. Hold up. So you came what? Hold up. So you came <laughs> Did y'all hear that? See, yeah. this is why this class is so dynamic. Mm -hmm. Brother, can you please rewind what you just said? I'm from New York. You from, That's all right. right. Yeah, you're from New I York. Have, like, when I, I was a child, I used to dream. Come around, come around so we can catch you on, on this stream. Because I want to. Now, I have no. None of this is scripted. Please, I want the people out there and, and live stream from Black and Nobel to understand yeah, this is not scripted. I want the camera because we are talking to every all our family right now. So, right here, say what you had to say again. Say that same line again. Oh, it was a time I didn't dream until I moved to Philadelphia. Then I started dreaming again. So, again, after yeah. you came back. You're originally from New York, but Wait. I used to dream as a child. But like my dreams stopped but when I sleep. It was like I just sleep. I like it just be pure black. Mm -hmm. So like I didn't dream until I come came back, came to Philadelphia. That's when I started dreaming. Wow. And it was in color too. Oh, oh, Philadelphia. Yeah. Oh. Philadelphia. Wait a minute now. Now specify. We have to specify it again. I had no idea of that. This is him sharing for the first time that with us after. Well, see, each one of you can't have testimonies. You definitely bear with us. I'm sorry. I, I got a lot of language jokes in my head. Oh, um, yes. You know, <laughs> and anybody in here hear a humming? Yeah. 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 Here, sister, I just want you to come on out and release the information no. that you're picking up. <laughs> but that's all right. We dreaming. We're hearing an overtone of sound, subconscious or sound sub sound like frequency. Like frequency. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I got, I got, I got that on, on deck. We're gonna take care of that. I hear it all day long. You hear it. Sometimes, sometimes it's loud at night. I don't know. No, it don't have nothing to do with that TV. Yeah, like sometimes somebody can have a TV on, like it don't have to be in this house. They can be like in my house, like way down the block. They can hear the talking. Like, you hearing other people's thoughts? No, that's the TV. I hear the frequency of the TV too. Well, okay. Well, I keep the TV turned off. All right. Hold on. Time out. That's cool. I, I love the energy. I got to keep the energy flowing because that means we're answering each other's questions. This is learning as well as healing circle. It's all the above. One thing I want to tell everyone, or not tell, but share, because I can't tell you anything, but I can only share what I found and what I meditate on. And there comes a point when right and wrong is no longer existent. In fact, that, 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 that straight line, right and wrong, is either this or that. That's not always the case. There is all of a, is a little bit of everything going on. So I'm going to explain what you're speaking of because in these documents that I had to give my identification of, I had to give my bank card, my ID, to get, yeah, I had to give ID, and you got to give a, your, your library card and everything else for them to give you the books. And when you're finished with the books, you got to give back, give them back the books and get your identification card back. That's how powerful this information is we're going to get. Wow. I'm gonna give you all of them. I don't want to spoil the part. Everything about the dreams, I'm gonna explain it. Can I go back in? Go ahead, go ahead. Because I'm glad you part. I'm so glad that that question came out. And it shall come, and it shall come to pass after that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. That is the Creator Spirit. Mm -hmm. That's the universe. We can call it God, call it Creator. Of the universe, call it what you may call, but it is the power and energy of the cosmos. It is the consciousness of the cosmos that moves through each one of us and makes life. And it has patterns. All energies in nature moves in patterns. It has time periods, mathematical time periods lined up with the stars. And your ancestors have recorded these fluctuations of changes of life pattern with the stars. So in this verse it says, and it shall come to pass afterward that I, that I is not referring to any person, 
and it's speaking of the universe, right? Whenever the Bible uses that I, it's all talking about the creator or God. Right. You, you use your word, which one you want, right? Yeah. That it was poured upon the spirit upon my flesh, right? Everybody good? Okay. And I know y'all got to move soon. But here's the next part that most people that she's getting into, that we all getting into. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Now, this is very interesting. Because I, I look, you know, okay, and I always look into the stars for answers. That's one of the things about being into metaphysics and mysticism is that we look, we use nature to give us answers. The glyph for Neptune, please. You got it? Neptune is the planet of dreams. Neptune is the planet of visions. Of course, Pisces, they say Pisces deals with most of the dreaming, right? Pisces, but the planet for Pisces, if I'm not mistaken, is Neptune. Okay? Now, Neptune is the planet for the for Pisces. We are leaving out of the Piscean age. And the dream time, the dream spell is the new age trying to come in. That's why I said, if you miss this one, right now, all of you are getting downloads on certain dreams. Some of you, if not most of you, are having the same dream. Don't go too far on a tangent. Ask the question, please, so I can go, keep going. Go ahead. In dreams, people that had a uh, relationship, do they communicate in dreams? Yes, they do. And they're not, yes. even though they're not together? Anymore? Yes, they do. There's no such thing as not being together. That's a, that's, that's a physical thing. Not I'm going to tell you a true story. Oh, don't go into no true story true too true long. Because if right, you do. Long. All right, listen to this. I had a dream about somebody's sister. <laughs> and listen, we was at Great Adventure. Okay. We was on a roller coaster. Uh huh. She had a ministry on a roller coaster. Check this out. The okay. next day, I get a phone call. My sister's pregnant. Okay. Was that the dream? Yes. Yes, that happens. Mm -hmm. And don't be shocked, it's going to keep happening. Mm -hmm. But all right, now that's that's real. Mm -hmm. That was called that's a personal revelation in dream world, in dream work, or in, in what they call intuitiveness. Okay. And melanin naturally makes Africans super intuitive because your melanin is a superconductor. Ready for this one? Transmitting and receiving signals, mm -hmm. light and sound. And I'll go back to explain that another time because that, that that's another subject in itself. That's why they got to keep you dumb down. Your sons and daughters are having dreams. And those dreams that you're having, since most of us are so scared to express it, we're having the You and then you see me do the same thing, and then you ask me, and until y'all finally get enough heart to say what you've been trying to hide from each other and say, I seen that last night also, or I seen that a month ago, the same dream. Now, my man, you said something earlier that clicked it all in place for me. You said you didn't start dreaming until you came, you from New York originally, visited Philly before. No, I, I, I used to dream when I was younger. Right, no, no, I got that. We got that. Right. But when you left Philadelphia and then came no, back. I didn't start dreaming until I came to Philadelphia. You didn't start dreaming until you came to Philadelphia. Now hold on to this right here. I want you to hold on to that man's statement. I want you to hold on to what she said. Because then I'm going to go into the prophecy and dreams. Yeah, I need to recognize. The name of Meek Bill's album is what? Dream what? Drinking. Thank you. And what city are you in? And there was an event here in Philadelphia at the Jewish Library Museum, and it was called what? Chasing Dreams. And it was done. Wait a minute. And it was over on October 26th. 
Oh, it means something definitely. But did you think what just happened? I'm interconnecting things that are happening randomly. Mm -hmm. And when you see random things start to actually have a center point when they're meeting, he didn't start dreaming until he came to Philadelphia. Wait till I start giving the information on how the city came into existence. Okay. Mystics built this city. Yeah, I, about that before. Yeah. I have the record. And the things that they studied was, guess what? African mysticism. Mm. And that's what you've been feeling in your souls. And that's why this is the first city to fight against slavery. Really? Right here in Germantown. This wow. is the place where the blueprint of what Philadelphia was to become on a spiritual plane happened. Now the dreams. Let's go into the dreams. Oh, go ahead. Uh -oh. I don't want to lose you. Not only Philadelphia, like, it was a lot of great battles from the Civil War, mm -hmm. but in So let's get in. The dreams. So we go into astrology. Like I said, I'm going to prove this with nature. I'm an African. I have to go to nature. And everyone, how many people were born in the 70s? Raise your hand. If you were born in the 60s and 70s, raise your hand. It's all right. Even if you was born before then, I'm going to go into something astrologically about now. And this also has a lot to do with television. And and the, the, the beauty is, so just asking, how many people were born in the 60s and 70s? It's all right. You don't, you don't, yeah, that's all right. It's not a bad thing. Here we go. Did everybody write this down? Okay. Wait a second. Hip hop, hip hop culture and rap music is was the actual process and a manifestation of dreams. There are things that are planted in the city that is given off frequencies. And once you come to learn, or for instance, Philadelphia has the largest parks. It has the most parks in the world and has the largest parks. Why? We'll go over. All right. Psychology. Right? This is the symbol psi. Also connected to the Greek god or Roman god Poseidon, right? Yeah. Talk about the three-eye monster, right? The third eye. You understand now why they use that symbol? Mm -hmm. Also, it's Neptune. Trident. And in India, it's Shiva's trident, the god Shiva. And he deals with spiritual work. He deals with things breaking down and things. Right? Now. Neptune, the planet, is going to usher in it is ushering right now from 1970 to right now the greatest revelation we together yeah. i'm going to start with i'm going to read from 1955 1970 and then finally we're going to go to 2026 we're going to add a number again i'm going to read all these different periods and what is foreseen for the world based upon this planet, this what we call generational planetary alignment. I'll start from 1955. And it's the reason why I went back that far, because I see my elders in here. So I want you to hear what's been happening under the planetary influence. And the powerful sign of Scorpio, Neptune and Scorpio. This happened from 1955 to 1970. Neptune's influence is shown in the depth and intensity of feeling. I'm going to go drop past some of the series. In years to come, this generation will continue to fight for more open government, 
and to rectify the probable secret damage done to our environment by ruthless profit seekers. Okay? While Neptune traveled through the sign of sex and mysticism, there was a breakdown of sexual taboos in society and a revival of interest in the supernatural. This was a time when all, all the, they called the hippie movement, civil rights mm -hmm. movement, people learning different things, new developments in consciousness, dropping of old traditions and picking up new traditions or finding old ancient ideas and being brought to modern time. This is what happened during 1955 to 1970. This is why the music sounded the way it did. This is why the people had the feelings and the emotions the way they did. This was the planetary alignment, Neptune and Scorpio. Again, that's 50. I'm sorry, go ahead, sister. You wanted to say something? No, I'm just, you look at what's going on now and think about that old song by the fifth dimension called Aquarius. That's what I'm about to go into. Okay. Let, let me finish. I'm going to go with you, all right? Now we're going to skip from 1970 to 1984. It's for all the 70s babies, right? Okay. In the altruistic sign of Sagittarius, Neptune has an uplifting influence. Astrologers put great store in the new generation born when Neptune is in this sign. And this is what many of our teachers and leaders meant when they said the opening of the seventh seal. It was done in 1970. This is the planetary information on that opening. This is why they flooded us with what? Okay, another thing that Neptune rules. Psychology, right? Psychiatry, pharmacology, pharmakia. Pharmakia means sorcery. Okay, creating poisons to cause different psychological happenings within one's beings. So Neptune rules drugs and dreams and fantasies also. That's the other side of it. So what did they make sure they did to the children born in the 70s? They made sure they flooded them with as much drug and violent paraphernalia and television. That blocked the signals. That's why you have dreams coming in on one level and you see, I'm gonna bring it all over. Sorry, guys. That's all right. No, no sorry for knowledge. <laughs> bring me another one over. If there's another one still there. These are the ones. That's, that's all. Bring that one too. That's 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 it. That's right. All right. Okay, see, this one is 20. Um, Thank, you. Thank you, no problem. So, our generation, they flooded with the drugs, heavy. Now, in the 60s, it was heroin, but heroin didn't work too well. They said, these cats got sober. They came out of the war. They said, oh, give them some more. It was already on the morphine and everything while they were over there, shell shocking and pain. That's why so much drug use was heavy. And notice I'm saying drugs. I ain't saying nothing about plants yet. Right. Everything I'm talking about is artificial, all of something that was created in the laboratory. But they got home and they took the drug use up. So they created an underground drug trade. So they said, we got to do something stronger than heroin. And then something stronger than heroin came. And here it comes. Right. Here comes the coke. Come, was right. it? Crack, crack didn't come yet. Nope. No, it didn't come yet. We're still in the beginning of the early 70s. Crack is still being made somewhere. Excuse my French, if you negatives, <laughs> you couldn't afford it. Some of us did. Some of us could, right? So they broke it down and found the more synthetic way and they said, give them crack. Now remember, the year is 1970 to 19 what? And what's the name of that movie? By George, uh, by Orwell, 19 what? 84. So they had to make sure that the children born at this time, their brain signals would have a what? A challenge to it. Because this was a generation that was supposed to bring in the new world order. The new what? We are the generation to bring in the new world order, according to astrology. Not the one they want. Not oh, definitely. So that's now, you about to, now it's starting to come sense. Is it coming out now? Mm -hmm. Listen. I'm going to skip some of these lines. Neptune is in, in this sign, in this sign, Sagittarius, is the sign of higher learning, philosophy, and freedom. The world looks forward to new philosophers and sages 
Neptune in this position brings a desire for liberty and truth and a visionary outlook. Neptune Sagittarians will no doubt play an important role in improving living conditions in third world countries. Neptune transits this sign of travel and expansion. More people have access to foreign cultures, cultures through travel and research. That is Neptune transiting Sagittarius from 1970 to 1980. I'm going to skip some of this, and I'm going to go straight now. Neptune in Aquarius, here we go. And, of course, Neptune, when it gets back into its own sign, Pisces. Now, these signs are star constellations. You people just say the signs. They don't ever tell you what the signs are. They are constellations. Y'all right? I'm right with you. If you got to, you need to raise your hand or say anything. Go ahead. And that's what we're here for. All right. And the humanitarian sign of Aquarius, Neptune's power will bring high ideas and social justice. Right on time. Neptune Aquarians will be concerned about the welfare of others less fortunate. Okay? They will have visionary concepts that will put into practice. They will put into practice. Now listen to this statement. As revolutionaries. That means astrologically they have already been looking forward to this time. But what they had to do was, again, confuse the brain signals and delay the trust in the people's self. By doing so, you've been having these dreams and these visions for years, but how many times have you actually translated them? Remember, we, was taught, we were taught in the religious world, and I have to be me. I'm not part of religion. I'm not here to bash you, but I got to tell the truth. I deal with spirit. I don't deal with nothing else but that. I'm an African. Dreaming. Dream interpretation was what? Outlawed. Astrology was outlawed. And of course, if you were African looking into ancient African spirituality or if you practiced any of your culture outwardly, you will be what? Ridiculed. And that ridicule of your culture internally is what's holding us and me and you back. It's holding the whole world back. The whole world has been put under a mental suppression. Never to express ancient ideas which are now coming here. Are you with me? Mm -hmm. So I'm showing you the stages in which humanity is progressing because the next one is going to get even deeper. Listen. They will tear down and destroy. Rather, they will build for a grand future. Neptune in this position has been called by astrologers the flame of consciousness. The generation born during Neptune's transit of Aquarius will be authors of unusual and undreamed of discoveries to aid mankind. That's what the technology is about. This generation will bring about a new world through its discoveries and its inventions. Last one, from 2012 to 2026, I'm go we're giving you forecasts. <laughs> Neptune in Pisces, the sign which this planet is aligned with. In Pisces, Neptune will be the sign it rules. Let me say it again. Neptune will be the sign it rules. Those born in this era, that's what you feel. That's what all those dreams are about. Everything has been enhanced. Listen again. Spirituality and creative genius will be enhanced. What are we here studying today? Spirituality. Have not that been for the last two, three years been on the rise? People wanting yeah. to know more. That's going to increase more and more. Okay. Neptune Pisceans will be deep thinkers with profound understanding. Generation born when Neptune, next transit Pisces, may usher in the ultimate period of self-realization, meaning they will come into the to the fulfillment of knowing self, collective self, personal self, and collective self. 
their ascendancy will help to bring peace and tranquility to the world. Neptune in this position does not value materialism. So Neptune Pisces no doubt will explore the inner man and woman and develop, and develop a new philosophy based on what they find. This takes me back to Joel. Now you understand why I read it? And to take you into the future a little bit. Mm -hmm. Joel chapter 2, verse 28. And it shall come, and it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and daughters shall prophesy, your old men shall dream dreams, and your young men shall have visions. Those dreams are going to pick up. But here's what here's what's happening. TV, television, computer, technology, nothing wrong with it. We have to have it, right, on a certain level in the modern world. But here's a little, little kick for you. I'm going to bring you some knowledge from the ancient world implanted in Philadelphia. Television was set up by the Psychic Research Society. Write it down. I'll put it on the board for you. <laughs> So what does that mean, Brother Levi? So what? What is what? How many years have your mothers and your fathers and your elders have told you it is a come to time in the house where you have to do what? Pray. Thank you. Pray. Okay, we're gonna get there. I'm I'm slow walking, sister, for a reason. Everybody ain't there so quick. Some people get mad at these things. So let's walk a little, let's walk a little slow. But thank you, that is the answer. Let me write this down for you. So people out there in live stream from Black and Nobel, this is the, these are ideas and constructs from Brother Levi. This does not reflect everyone here. Thank you very much. Television, TV, I'll, I'll abbreviate. Psychic research. Society. These are the people who are behind the creation of or the production of the television. Now, here's where you guys were battling, and this is why I told you there was no battle. Everything is vibrating. The whole universe is the manifestation of vibration. Excuse me one second. The whole universe is the product of vibration. Thought is what is the intelligence of the spirit vibrating right now your television operates off and has always operated on two frequency bands uhf and what's the other one come on over here let them go let them have it thank you sister yeah oh yeah yes uh, no, VHS yeah. is the, the VCR tape. Yeah, I don't know how many people are about it. VHS is the, the, the box tape. No, okay. old tape player. Yeah, yeah. Uh, video tapes. Yeah, I've been, I've been studying this since video tapes. Okay. So That's what I'm saying. I'm seeing the gray cone. Stop. <laughs> anyway, okay. so <laughs> here we go. Elder, UHF stands for what? Ultra high frequency. Yeah. 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 VHF stands for virtual. Very. Virtual ain't come yet. Virtual was around, but it ain't come yet. Oh. Very. Very high. Very high. Very high frequency. Very high frequency. Now, remember when you were children, peace, brother. Peace, peace, peace. You were struggling with frequency. Frequency. That's what makes life happen is learning how to build up your frequency from one state to another. That's called maturation. We, our cells are vibrating in harmony with the planets. In the book of Ecclesiastes, it says what? There is a season and a re time and reason to everything. But keep it keep it simple let's keep it slow so everybody can stay together yeah please don't take me too far ahead <laughs> if y'all are enjoying the class i would text people and let them know i'm all going to blackandnobel.com right now 
Ultra high frequency. Right on the home page. Yes, sir. Thank you, Bob. <laughs> he wasn't going to tell you. Yeah, I'm gone. I'm, I'm so, yeah, yeah. I gotta give you all this data, so because this is very important. Remember when you were a child, and Saturday morning comes, and your, your children is straight up sleep. You might be okay. So see, I got an elder there, so and, and I got a couple people that can vouch for me. So you in the kitchen with your lady, right, or whoever? I don't know. I can't. I can't make no new age. So whatever. Uh, so. Uh, I love her on hate for none. So, turn on the television. Now, y'all chilling, making foods. Y'all sit down. Y'all turn on the television, and all you hear is. And what you're hearing is what? Upstairs. All the chilling they hear. Peep. All they got to do is hear that one little sound. And they don't even have to hear it. All they got to do is feel it. And, then and automatically, your baby boy and baby girl eyes is lifted down. Who turned the what on? Who turned the television on? That's how high the frequencies are. Your nervous system can pick up the frequency. So dream time can be invaded on by television. This is why they always say when children are studying or you're doing certain things or you're trying to speak on certain things with your children, you do what when they're doing homework? Turn off the television. Yep. Yep. And that's not because they're just. And the radio. And the radio. Not yep. because they're just distracted by what's being heard and seen. Because you can turn that down. You can turn it down and they still keep going like this. Because they can feel it. And that frequency is being picked up by the brain. Because the brain is pulsating it. On your neurons react to electricity in the atmosphere. When something doesn't feel right and someone has a bad vibe, yeah. or some group where you go into a place, a building with a nasty right. feeling, yeah. and your hair stands up on your arms. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So just imagine what a television is kicking out with a radio signal frequency beacon with a tower as tall as a high rise project building. And it's transmitting all over the country, all over the world. How much electricity is the body picking up now? So now, this, this is to remind you how powerful dream work is. Guess what? You give off frequencies and you give off signals. And other people can pick them up. Right. Yeah, but you say someone's name and they what? Show up. Yeah. You yeah. think about somebody and you dream about them enough and you run into them on the what? Street. Yeah, they call you or something like that. Loved one passes away and makes transition to the other sides of energy, wherever that may be for them. Right, whatever frequency things are vibrating on, and you start hearing their voice, and it feels like they're having a conversation with you. Yes, yes, yes. You can hear like when you, my you know brother passed. Now, I'm like you talk talking about this Neptune. Um, I was playing with this group, and that uh, the first cut of the group, I mean, the first cut of our project was Neptune. Okay. And that wow. uh, <laughs> see, like I'm a jazz drummer, and that uh, I've been playing playin with John, John Coltrane nephews, mm -hmm. okay. And that the first tune was Neptune, and it was a long tune, and that they had all Philadelphia cats on it. Mm -hmm. So I'm saying, but like we did this one recording in Baltimore, and my brother had died. All right, and when my brother died, my her mother lives. I'm at the second house from the corner. She's the fourth house from the corner, and she will always call me up and say, "Rashi, there's somebody on the porch, ringing my doorbell." I said, "Ma, listen, that's Keith." I said, "Like that's your son. He's ringing the doorbell or something." I says, "Like, your husband down downstairs and say hi, Keith or something." I says, but this happened for years. You know what I'm saying? The doorbell kept on ringing. You know, she he kept on hearing the doorbell. And I says, well, like, that could even be two days. Tell him to let you know that he's still around. Or, like, maybe 
you just hearing things. I don't know. But uh, like that Neptune thing. So this so once again I, I just wrote down a word that this is the second time in class. This is third time. First it was you, then it was him. There's movies like this. I'll give you some of the movies. Um which one was it? Who said it? Inception. Thank you. Inception? Mm -hmm. Good. And inception, inception is a little more proactive though. That means you're purposely putting yourself in trance state to move through time. I can teach you that before you leave if you want me to. Okay? I got the bowl. Anybody know about me in the bowl know what's about to happen. The other one is a movie called um, Revolution. Okay, it was a TV movie that came out a couple years ago. And where did the movie take place? Philadelphia, <laughs> yeah, okay, excuse me, Revolution, another movie, there's so many movies, I can't even remember more, but I, I can have some of them in my head, um, Revol Inception, Revolution, um, Avatar, believe it or not, because that whole movie was about him being asleep, and he goes off in a computer program, or takes on a new But that's a real that's you oh, hold on somebody raise their hand please because y'all y'all raise your hand at the points when i'm about to say something too go ahead brother water because water the brain number one the whole body is 85 80 to 85 percent what water number two all of us are born inside of what and when it comes to dream work dream work moves through the what Water, the memory, the memory is water. The root word of memory is the Hebrew word mem. Brother, please give me a chance to bring it on. Y'all yeah, always do this. <laughs> For a moment, give me on the break. this is why I say bring your pencils and your pads and your pens. After, because man, y'all say stuff and y'all activate all types of codes in my head. I have trillions of them and every word I say. So please hold your questions. Yes. Memory, the word mem in Hebrew, the letter mem. Guess what it means? It means water. And also what? We know that all of the universe is swimming in what? Water, hydrogen. And who is water? That's right. And water it represents con conduit, what? Conduciveness. Conduit. 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 So you can send electricity and sound and light and everything through water because everything around us is made up of particles and water is the womb of everything. Yeah, I love water. I'm a water sign. So, so now, <laughs> yeah, see, <laughs> I just revealed something else. Okay, so now we be still on Neptune, so don't lose that, all right? Now, this is for the sister, for everybody here, it's particularly the sister. She says he loves this movie. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you why you love this movie so much. Because this is a real word. Oh. Okay. And that's really your name. But somebody was messing with you. Somebody always messing with you. You better believe it. <laughs> <laughs> and remember, if you've been coming to my class when I speak on etymology, A E I O U, and sometimes, wow. Wow. and we know that the vowels are what? Interchangeable. A, E, and E is really, in some languages there is no E. I, O, U, A, E, I, O, U. And the description of the Nabi, the newbie, is two types of newbies. Right. There's the Twa, the oldest Nubians on, in the universe, in this planet, who are four to five, usually range from three to five feet tall, right? Then you have the other Nubian population, which most people know as the what? The Mandi, the Watupsis, the very tall people with the long what? Or the Maasai, who live in Kenya, who are the oldest version and the oldest descendants of the what? Nubians. There are the next group, the Maasai. Who be Avatar, they made it based off of an African woman. They got a black woman from Africa. I think she's from Somalia. Or Sudan, one of those two. This Everything is, is based off of a black woman. Yes, yes. But no, literally, the movie Avatar, if you go get the book, 
they got an African sister to play the main part. They never show you her, but her the face of all of the Nabi are African and with yellow eyes, and that's called Africanus with the eyes. The eye color is Africanus. That's what they call it. Yellowish eyes, that's your trait. So they made the movie based off of you. Everything. A tree that's in the middle of the of the land. There is a tree in West Africa called the Aruku tree, which is in, off the coast of Yoruba land, Benin. The Aruku tree is the tree that they took that made us walk around to figure who we were. It's a little Whoa. fact. If you go look up history of peace, good afternoon. The history of slavery, there is a tree in Yoruba land that they made people walk around. And that tree is called the Aruku tree, the tree of life and the tree of forgetfulness. I heard it. Mm -hmm. Oh, see, there's a lot going on. And they're with the Nabi in the movie. They say they're digging for a particular element. And this element is going to power all of their train stations, everything in their society. Well, this has already happened. And the place of the Nabi is the Nubians, Africa. And the element where they said it was the tree of life in the movie, the element is called Kotan. And it is in the Congo. And it is the basis which makes every telephone and everything around you work. Yeah, Dr. Yeah. 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 But we've been talking about it for a long time. So, so now, <laughs> so now you can see how the movies are playing out. Remember, movies are still ruled by what? Neptune. Films, dreams, projections. All movies are what? See, everybody in my class, we have to do it. All movies are projections. projections. And when you dream, you dream in the same speed that movies are recorded. Rewind the tape. Let me say it again. Now you see why I said these dreams are people, these movies are people's dreams made for film. And when you sit and you let it in and you have no filter, you now start taking in other people's emotions and constructs. Now you see why all the spiritual spiritual master teachers around the world are so against, they're not against this, how, how can I put it, that they tell their students all the time, take time out for yourself and turn off the screen. You have your own screen. Right. That's why. Go ahead, speak, come on. Can I say something? Yes. That's, why, that's what I don't understand about people where they say they want to move forward, but they always go backwards. Mm -hmm. like, you wonder what's that about? Well, there's a natural reason for that. It's not so bad. Many a times we go back to pick up energy mm -hmm. to go forward. That's that's part of nature. That happens. It's called building up. You go back to go forward. Also known as in our culture as sankofa. But what you're talking about though is being stuck. Yeah, you in know, the you get stuck in a past. You go all on in the past. Okay. Now, oh, yo, yeah, why do people go back to the past? You got to remember that. Dwelling on something and going back for something is two different things. Right. Some people go back in the past and dwell on it because of how it makes them feel. It's nostalgic. It's a good feeling. The good old days, remember? See, even the word remember, remember. Good old days. But some people go back to try to find an idea and bring the idea and connect it to the place where they are or where they're trying to project themselves. Yes. That is the value of heritage. And the words that I'm using, I'm going to go into the inner code in a minute. So let me finish. Mm -hmm. so, so you're definitely right, sister. But we do this for a reason. Because your dreams is your movie. Your life is your film. Right. This is your film. And you can write out this film how you want to. All you got to do is project. Mm -hmm. And then, and the inspiration of your projection live out that projection. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But what's happening with us? We're sitting at home for five, six, seven, eight, nine hours, and we're constantly loading in other people's projections into our minds and hearts, and wondering why the kids are going crazy. Well, look at the types of projections you give them. You give them a projection of a whole city being destroyed by one man running around with a gun. So you get so if you've been watching that from the age of four, 
So 14, then you're 24, then you're 34, then you're 44, then you're 54, and we, we can keep going, right? Yeah. All your life you've been looking at these gangster film projections. You're in an environment that's already fostering the feeling of it. So all we got to do is just tip the bag just a little bit, and y'all will do it. And then wonder where your distorted thoughts come from. They're projections. And we have to be careful not to know that we're not living in other people's what? Projections. All life is a projection. So now it's time to use these, right? It's right? Yeah. I love that symbol. That's my shit. Hey, here's looking at y'all, right? Mm -hmm. Right? You have to start creating your own projections and write down your projections and live out your projections. And then you'll start creating the world, the environment you want to live in. And I've already given you the time. I showed you the astrological alignments so that you can know that the universe is already moving with you. So the dreams that are being poured out into you, it's time for you to write them down. And in fact, do more than just dream. There's two levels. There's dreaming and there's visualization. Do you know the difference? The difference between dreaming and visualization. Visualization is you viewing something. But it can be sleep or awake. You know, what else? There's something else I'm looking for. I'll show you. I'll tell you what it is. You ready? Dreaming is passive, and it's not, and in fact, this is this is the feminine. That's all right, and this and you will see in a second while this and it's older. That's another thing, older, active, visualizing. That's when you have the intent of. Through the subconscious mind. You see the difference? This is why they say women receive things a little bit different or more intuitive. Because they're not blocking their ideas. They're not trying to stand in the way of what's coming in. This is why they also say sisters have a certain learning curve on men. It's not to say that men are stupid or dumber than women. Not at all. We are not dumber than women. No one's smarter than nobody. But there's a special thing about the sisters, and that is they internally already is built in a mechanism for you to receive and women pass it on to their babies when they're pregnant that's why women when they're pregnant dream more because you sleep more and guess who is sleep with you and every dream that you have guess what they inherit that a woman's thought What happens is that men and women forget what they were thinking about in the time of conception. Oh, are you going into the science of sexology now? Yes, I am. What were you thinking about when you and him or you and her and them and that and them they? Sat with this beautiful group of beings inside of you, all trillion of them throughout the ages of the planet and cosmos. Now it comes out as a baby girl and baby boy. That child pulls all of the memories of the times and all the dreams you dreamt. They also pick up all the negative things that happened during that time, too. Yes. About the dreams. I've been noticing lately with my son. He's only 10. He's turning 10. Right. And a lot of his dreams, he's speaking in them and he's laughing a lot. And I was like, why? Oh, I mean, he's literally like breaking up in all of his dreams. Well, that's a good thing. We see yes. him crying. Yeah, I know, but I'm just saying, like, <laughs> I, I just be wondering. That's away right now. And he constantly telling me he's on his way home, mom, or he'll say, I just saw a crying. I'm like, okay, where you see him, man? He said, my dream. I said, so what was he doing this time? He said, he was just standing there watching me. I said, okay. But I just 
what you're saying kind of like all this is just really making sense to me because my Ooh. youngest is like really the closest to me Did y'all look at the board? Before yeah. you before you said it. You already wrote it down. And he's a male as well. This is this is the cosmic symbol of Mary and Jesus. Mm -hmm. Mariam and Isa. Mm -hmm. Isis and Horus or Aset and Haru. Mm -hmm. That's what this is about. That's what the Holy Trinity is about. That's why they keep those symbols, those icons around. You think they're just symbols of a man, uh, of an older woman holding her baby and she no, just, no. no. This is what the icons are talking about. They're talking about having access to the dream world mm -hmm. and also the power to project into creation or to the world, the planet, what it is that they want. Okay? So now that's four people who have just, how can I say bear witness? I can't say testify. I'm going to leave that word alone. <laughs> okay? I'm going to leave that word alone. But now that's four people yeah. who just bear witness? Yeah. Okay. A shadow. <coughs> I bear witness. Yeah. Now who knew that we was going to have this conversation and this, this dialogue with that? I had no idea we was going to have this dialogue. All right? Now. They'll say, well, what does this have to do with Philadelphia? Now, brother, tie it in for us. Because it started well with sacred societies in Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. Well, first I had to establish what's going on in the cosmos. Because in sacred societies, we are taught in all ancient societies of spirituality around the world that if you want to verify anything that's going on, look to the heavens. Please be careful. As above, so below. As it is in heaven, so it is on what? Earth. All right. That's a hermetic statement in the Bible. The Lord's Prayer is a hermetic statement. All right? So I want y'all to stay tuned on this. Now we're going to go into the history of Philadelphia, the spiritual legacy, and its connection to secret societies. Stay tuned. Everybody good? Mm -hmm. I gotta walk slow. You know I gotta walk slow. Y'all ready for the next revelation? Yeah. So did we get through that smooth? Yes. All right. Look like the temperature picking up too. That that look like that light from. There's a little bit more about us. Now remember, I talked about all the different ages and 1950 Neptune, 1970s Neptune alignment. Now the Neptune Aquarius alignment, right? Okay. Your all the children that was born in the 70s was labeled something, and you didn't have to just be born in the 70s either. But the 70s was a special time when this statement was made very prevalent. And this is what they called us. Called us. Indigo children. How many people heard that statement before? Okay. How many people know what it is? Okay. What would an indigo child Okay, and then of course, remember that the, the word indigo is connected to a frequency, what some people will call color, and the color for indigo is what? It's navy yes. children. Huh? Indigo is navy blue. Navy blue. Water children. Water children, that's good. Navy, uh, there you go. Navy blue. Good. And what's another, what do they say about us when we get so chocolate, 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 what they say, that boy is what, that girl is what? Blue black. Blue black. Come on, I love it. That's the best. Hey, give me a blue black woman any day. 
I'll be the first one in line. I'm always the first one. Not that baby. You better believe it. <laughs> right? So. You want to stop playing? I'll beat you over there. All right. So, blue black children. Water. Somebody said water. Label. Water. Interesting. And the color blue. So they're talking naturally about children who come from a deeper spiritual well, right? But that's not to say that they don't also come from a deep what well? Come on, let's stop playing with it. These are African children. Right. All around the planet, all around the globe. It's not, indigo children are found in all nationalities. Please, I'm not saying that. I want the people out there to be clear. But the origin of indigo people and indigo children, that spirit that they're picking up on, is an ancient that's been suppressed in society for a very long time. Now, I'm going to read just only a part because I don't. We, I know this is a chapter that we have. We got to hear. This is from a book. I'm going to put the name of the book on the board, and it's not Indigo Children, but it's a book called Indigo Adults. We can get the book for you. Okay, and it's by Kabir Jaffe. How much is that book, brother? How much is this book? Yeah. This book is uh, sixteen dollars, and it's well worth it. Let me tell you, because what I'm about to read to you, you're gonna feel like they're reading, they're speaking directly to you. Because when I read it in, in the nighttime, I was chilling, I started getting shakes. I was like, man, this book is so. Some books, some people can write very well, and they it's almost like they're writing especially for you. Right to so, you. Yeah, so and Ratama Davidson. So that's for the people out there in the live stream here for Black and Nobel. You can go uh, look the book up and we'll try to actually get those books here for you. Okay, so I'm just gonna go in real quick. Okay, I'll read it from here. Each astrological age brings, excuse me, I'll wait for it. you. Need any help, brother? No, you put destruction of civilization. Destruction of black civilization. Yes, destruction of the I don't think we have. We are right now. Okay. This is the first time I actually to the store. Okay. Each astrological age brings in not only the energies of that sign. Which then play play upon the planet, but it also brings in specific groups of souls. Okay. There was a soul group that was a part of the Piscean age and carried Piscean energies. Piscean energy is belief energy. This was a this was the group that was primarily incarnation during the Piscean age. Now, as the Aquarian age comes in, we have the Aquarian energies playing upon the planet. Now we go into the song, Fifth Dimension. This is the, let's look at the year. Now remember, we, we went over the astrology. 1965, Which, when did that song come out? I think it's like 1969 or 70. 1968 to 69, I remember it. Yeah, yeah, 68 to 69. Okay, most people always say when we bring up, you know, the science of that. Okay, yeah, we're in the age of Aquarius. And I said, no, look, listen to the song again. That's not what they said. They're, they're letting you know in specific terms. This is the dawning right. of the age. I mean, this is the beginning. Okay. All right? Now, but nobody's really explaining it in detail. Here's what's going on. The, this is what they call the particular integral group. The Aquarian soul group that is incarnating now has significant significant differences from the Piscean soul group. They have different activities in their chakras with resulting differences in psychology, thought, feeling, and behavior. You know what one of those behaviors is? That boy seems to be ahead of his. That girl is ahead of her. Indigo children usually have a sense of being a lot older than they are. They, they can pick up on things and are how can I say somewhat what they call psychic? 
They can pick up on things a lot faster. They know things that people of their age, according to this society, shouldn't know. And most, and there's a lot of our children who are in the schools who are like that. And in fact, there's large numbers who are in tune. And what happens? You've been seeing things all your life and knowing things all your life, but you can never talk about it. European supremacy, racism, sexism, and every other ism in prison, you can think of. And all of that God's but it can't. And let me tell you how long you've been trying to come here. And then you'll understand Philadelphia, my brother. Because I'm a, I'm a, all of this is connected. These souls first, first began to incarnate into the world in the 1700s. Boom. Now, what's so important about the 1700s? The 1700s was the beginning of the first New World Order. In other words, that's when America first had not her what? Constitution. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right? And with that constitution came the birth of what they now call America, the institution. Anyway. Right? That was shaking off the shackles, particularly for Europeans, of the old European slavery that listen again to the statement. See, they, they tell it on itself again. Listen close. <laughs> These souls first began to incarnate in the 1700s. At that time, there was only a trickle of them. They're talking about indigo people. It was a lot more than that. Do you know what happened? Couldn't show your face. If, if someone knew that you were smart and was looking for you and trying to find out what you knew, would you let them know you knew? So they were hiding. Who was hiding? Let's keep listening. culture, a belief-driven culture and civilization, carrying new ideas and new energies. And they were different than what was the norm. And in a sense, these individuals seeded the Piscean culture with Aquarian energies. They were the first faint green shoots what over centuries will grow into full bloom. And here they are. The people who invented the 20th century. All of them. Your ancestors. Right. Because half of the stuff that they did was impossible. If you couldn't go to the library, how do you figure out electricity? The black woman who created all of the hair products and, and became not only the first female millionaire in this country. She got her ideas in a dream. Madam C.J. Walker. All these people have less than what we have today but did more. So what energy were they picking up on? It's God spirit. It's that dream energy. Black people, you are intuitive. By nature, they always had the intelligence. Ben was born in what? He was born in Maryland, Baltimore. But um, what time period? During slavery. And he debated Thomas Jefferson and embarrassed him. Wait, that's the 70th. Yeah, in the 1700s, he did. Are you get, are you picking up now? Yeah. You have been trying to release high levels of knowledge and power for centuries. But we have been living under constant cultural suppression. And that suppression turned into violence. Mm. And guess where the violence was put up? And who and who had that violence directed towards them? We did. We didn't you didn't put no violence out there in the world. All the violence we have been shown was self-inflicted violence. Mm -hmm. You know, violence we inflict on each other. Not on, not nowhere near the place where most people would like to place it. So we deal with a cultural suppression. That's how long you have been coming here with these ideas. All the things you're doing right now, your ancestors did it. You don't think they did, but they did. All the books you think you done read, they didn't read the books. They were having the visions of it already. Right. you have they had it in probably 10 times more but due to suppression 
couldn't release it. Now the planets are lining up and they're asking you and me to release that sacred knowledge. So I'm just gonna, I'm gonna get out of this because this will take a thousand. Indigo energies and indigo souls begin coming into the planet around the early 1700s. These early incarnations have the toughest job of breaking the ice and bringing in the first new energies. They have ushered in the industrial revolution, electricity, scientific thought, and the new ideas of liberty and freedom. We are now in a culture of transition, and it is at this time of sweeping, sweeping change, something new has been born within you and within the culture. And that's why you're asking questions. That's writing more. You're saying more. This becomes especially obvious with the new spirit that emerged in the 1960s. But there is still much struggle as we wrestle with the outer layers of our personality and the outer establishment. That's what's happening. We're trying to get off the chains of colonial... Matter of fact, if y'all want the real honest truth, white people don't believe in half of the stuff they have told the world to believe in. <laughs> they have to listen, and, and I'm not gonna say they because we are family, and I have plenty of people, friends in all nations around the world. We all family on a certain point, and I'm gonna say it for a reason. You the oldest, so that everybody follow you. So when they act crazy, it's because we act crazy. You, you say, well, I, I don't understand. Okay. <laughs> You want a slave boat coming to another country? That's only a hundred year difference. How did you go in a hundred to hundred fifty years being rulers over a place and then being slave to the people that you once taught? There must be something wrong. And we don't like to admit it. Yeah. What do we do? You know what we did. All of us know what we did. We sold out our next door neighbors. That's the yeah. And when we started to have philosophy and opinions, it's right there on the wall. He said what? Sloth and indifference is what made us slaves and what? Bravery and knowledge and learning and education will make us a race far excellent. Right? It's right there on that wall. So I'm not the only one saying it. We've been saying it through the ages. It's our own internal habits and hatreds that puts us in this bad predicament. Now let's let's open up the book on Philadelphia now. Y'all ready? So we already talked about the indigo souls. Indigo souls are found in all nationalities. I want the people in live stream to hear this. And the indigo people, the indigenous people, being you, you set the frequency. You are the Alpha and Omega. Y'all set the frequency. All right? Especially these things right here. Can I bring them out? Bring them out, bring them out. Bring them out, bring them out. I got, hey, this one's for you, man. <laughs> I got to mess with you. I got 52 cars come out. Man, you feel like I got 52 bars come out. Man, you feel it with the hustler. Hey, with a G on the street. What's the seventh letter? What's the seventh letter? G. What does G stand for? Uh, Say it. Geometry. God. And what else? Geometry. Geometry. To measure one's life and existence and to measure and walk according to the principles of creation, the creator, God, whatever name you choose. And the 52 cards is the ability to use a deck of cards to do divination. Got 52 cards to come out, then you say it. <laughs> See, so that's what you meant by the uh -huh. cards. Oh, uh -huh. tarot. So you got them. And tarot cards, every last tarot card in the tarot card deck can be found in the Bible. I'm looking for it. Mm. <laughs> <And he's just laughs> <laughs> See? And that's why they got some of your children running the trap houses. Anyway, so, you can't see better? They've been entrapping us for 500 years 
with desires and dreams and every other bugged out thing? When are we going to stop being misled? I wa I'm waiting for them cats to really bring their 52 cards out because when they bring their 52 cards, I'm going to ask them, what do you see for your race? Or should I say your nation? Thanks for your patience. No, Do your thing, brother. Now, of course, y'all say, where at in the Bible is these book, these tarot cards? If you go to the Psalms 119, I'm going to go there for you. And why do you pull that out? Then you always laugh. Psalms 119 has Hebrew alphabet letters on top of each verse. Every Hebrew letter is connected to an astrological sign. Are you listening? Listen again. Every Hebrew letter that's on top of one of the Psalms, from so Psalm 119 on up, each letter is connected. Go ahead, you want to tell? Come on, no, no, I want you to help. You want to show them the cards? Each Psalm. Matter of fact, there it is. What does Aleph mean? See Psalm 119 right there in front of you? And there's a letter over top. It says Aleph. Aleph is an alphabet card. Yeah. No, 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 don't read it. You still don't see it. Oh. Yeah, see, that's it. Gotta be able to see it. But a Psalm 119, now look over top of the verse. What letter do you see? It says Aleph. Aleph is A. That Hebrew letter has an astrological sign. So when you're reading those books, a lot of times there's codes inside. No one ever told you what the letters represented. The letters are in the tarot card deck. Here you go. <laughs> what I'm telling you is that these biblical verses are connected to astrology. And the people who founded Philadelphia were responsible. You ready? For helping also to put the Bible together. Here we go. When you finish with those cards, make sure they, they reach back up here. <laughs> okay? Everything good, brother? All right. I'm going to actually probably tear some of these pages off. I didn't want to lose any of the pages. It's a lot of money, right? Well, you spend on some knowledge. I'll think, I'm not going to start this far up. I'll think I'll go straight into the lesson. Here we go. How many people in, in this class? I know uh, if you've been to the cave with me, raise your hand. I'm going to pass around this to you so you can see it. And I'm going to put it up for y'all to see out there live. You want to come up and help me? Let's see it. And of Rosicrucians. Let me explain what the Rosicrucians are. I know you was waiting for this one. <laughs> and I'm going to explain to you, my man, why you keep getting dreams in Philadelphia. Philadelphia did not get his name from the Bible. Ooh, be careful right there now, beautiful. All right. Let me tell you where he got his name from. Philadelphia got his name inside of an old spiritual Masonic lodge in London. And the name of the lodge was the Philadelphia Lodge. Philadelphia was planned 200 to 300 years before it was actually founded in this country. Yeah, I guess I had to really go into the archives to find that information, didn't I? Yeah. Say, oh, oh, oh. Ooh, okay. That's it. I said, oh, it's, yeah. <laughs> Catch, right? Uh -huh. They won't be the revealer who said that. Right. All right, here we go. Come on. Oh, that. All right. I'll read it. Unfortunately, I have to reveal it. The, this is the actual year and the time where I have to reveal the information. So, there's no choice. Rosicrucians. The Rosicrucian Order is the oldest sacred society on the planet to this date. It is one of the only societies that has left, there are many of them, 
this is the one that survived in Europe. Oldest fraternal group in the world. Predates even European Freemasonry. Thank you, sir. As long as they get back up here. They are the keepers of all of the ancient secret doctrines that are around the world. When they left Europe, they targeted this country. And the place that they settled, the first city that they settled was Philadelphia. What does the rose represent? The rose represents love, right? And the spirit. The blossoming of the rose. Remember Sting? Y'all like Sting, right? The, the, the recording artist Sting? Y'all know who he used to go back in the day. Yeah. The, secret in the, desert, the secret of the rose. The lily of the valley. The rose represents love and the spirit, right? Crucian cross represents the cross. Represents time and space. Nature, life on earth. So a Rosicrucian is one who studies the nature of the spirit and how life on earth operates. Okay. Now, there's another word there, and you can see it. What's the color of a rose? Red. What's this? Cross. Say it. Say naturally. Come on. Cross. I'll let you look at it for a minute. Red cross. Red cross. Wow. Red cross. Ready to hear the history now? Yeah. Finish. <laughs> This is all about you. You should study it as much as possible. This is all about you, Africans, Nubians, and people around the world. This is your heritage. Okay, I said that word, but I think I need to show it because I say it, but it, it got. I T A G E. Break the word down. Her age. It's her age. And when you come of age, you'll begin to know her a lot better. Who is she? She's your mother. Who is the mother? Heaven. What's another mother? Mother Nature. Earth. Versus history. 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 You got that one. Okay. Give me another one. How about hysterectomy? Well, how about hysteria? And how crazy have you been listening to fairy tales that don't make no sense? Keep careful. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and you've been all cut up, messed up. So if you really want to get down to it, you got to study the history or the heritage of Earth, the heritage of your ancestors, the heritage of your genealogy. And there lies the secret. Ancestors are here now. Yeah, very heavy. Because now I'm about to take deal with. So some others have gone, and everybody that gone. When we get up to that elevation, we yes, we get up that elevation. I got so many. I'm gonna show you pictures of the whole place. Okay. Or you, have, or you haven't been there yet. Don't actually right. go to this place. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I went. In 1694, be able to make the trip. Yeah, right. it's beautiful too, especially go at the right season. Yeah. In 1694, a band of Rosicrucians mm -hmm. who had assembled for, from several places in Europe survived the perilous voyage and settled near Philadelphia. Please pay attention. Don't worry about them; they ain't going nowhere. But I am <laughs> establishing there a chapter. Of their mystical lodge. That's why I said, please take your take your time. Thank you. No problem. Okay. Establishing their mystical lodge. Yes, yes. Huh. So we're talking 1694. 
When was Philadelphia established? 1666. William Penn. So this is right after William Penn gets here. I don't want to reveal too much of the story because it's going to come down to what kind of knowledge is behind Philadelphia. He was from Germany, right? England. But the lodge that he went to was not a Masonic lodge. It was a Rosicrucian lodge. Remember, I gave you the year for a reason. Okay. We're in the 1600s. I'm talking about the 1600s, y'all. Yeah. And they're talking about mystical lodges. Whenever you hear about anything spiritual, you should already have your antennas up. They're talking about who? You. You. All right. All were third degree adepts known as perfecti. The traditional Latin name for those in the highest degree. They did not recruit or train new members, but sought replacements as they were needed from among perfecti in established chapters in Europe. Their first leader was a frail young scholar and mystic, Johannes Celtius. He wasn't black so much. Then again, when I see the drawings of him and the illustrations, it makes me think otherwise. But he was German. Now, now hold on to that because Germany was saved by a black man. And what was his name? Uh, Saint Maurice. Yeah. Sa Germany was on the way to being obliterated by a military army during the 13, 1100 to thirteen hundred, somewhere around that time period. And a black man named Saint Maurice, who was the head of a whole army, fought off the incoming army mm -hmm. and saved the German people. So make you think about some things, don't we? He was the first person to be ever given the German eagle. <laughs> The only other person that had the German eagle was Hitler. A black man became the savior of the same thing. Do I need to say any more? No. Very interesting no. things to see how the universe flips back and forth. The first leader was a frail young scholar and a mystic, Johannes Kelpius. This unique entirely of perfecta came to be known in American records as the chapter of perfection. A completed having mastered all requirements for this highest degree in the same sense a lawyer today might refer to a court appeal as having been perfected as completed in all its requirements and similarly similar meaning persists in the new testament uses of the word perfect carry all over from early latin versions i'm gonna skip some parts here we go i'll skip some Rosicrucians felt at home among such people in Europe and sympathetic with their aims. In fact, a collaboration of Rosicrucian, Pius, Quakers, and Philadelphians. A similar lodge was in England and has sponsored and financed the special migration. A whole secret society, sacred society, at this point in 1694 is about to leave Europe and is about to come to America. Wissahickon Park is where they go to set up their first Ooh. city, their mm -hmm. first location. Mostly. Philadelphia, right in Wissahickon Park. That's where we went. Listen. Wow. We used to go. According to Sask, Sask. Now there's a book company called Sask Books. S A S C H E. All the books in this company are books on mysticism. This was an actual person. You see his name on the books, but you don't know he's a real person. You know what he used to do? collect every book on philosophy and spirituality. And so later on after he died, his name was used for a whole book company that held all the books on religion and spirituality. Who in 1895 had collected to compose the chapter of mystics who are not only pious, many people who believe in God heavy, and the accepted scene of the word, but they were also true theosophical Rosicrucian community a branch of the ancient mystical brotherhood who studied and practiced the Kabbalah. Heard that word before? Yeah. Okay, you have it. So that's why I'll explain it. The people who came here who were some of the first Europeans to land were practitioners of Kabbalah spirituality, meaning they studied ancient Semitic magic. 
Europeans, I'm going to put this out there. And I love y'all. I really do. I love all my people. I love everybody in humanity. I don't want nobody to get mad at me. I really don't because I don't I want you to get my point. Because you'll be too busy mad at me and you don't get my point. I want you to think about the 1600s Africans, blacks are chained up inside of a building. These are the people who have the original language and science and knowledge on how to break down creation in their very language. But they're chained up in a building at the London Coffee House in the 1600s. While the people are out in the wilderness studying Kabbalah. Hold on, please, let me finish, because this is important. Because I need the people out there in the world to see what's happening. Walking around in darkness. Please, let me finish, because see, here's the revelation. There won't be any change in America or the world until the tools of African children are placed back in their hands. It has nothing to do with hatred. You can enslave a group of people and then ask them for, ask them answers, ask them for, you know, help, and then have them in slavery. So that's why Philadelphia was the first place where it stopped, because it was a contradiction. The Rosicrucian culture is based on ancient Egyptian spirituality. You are not going to enslave the children of Egypt, Ethiopia of spirits and for knowledge to be given to you. The universe don't work that way. You can't ask for freedom and still enslave people. This is the contradiction of America. That's why Philadelphia feels you get this jittery feeling. You're trying to figure out what's going on here. On one level, black people are sinned in Philadelphia and in New York and different places. But on one level, you're like, well, why is there so much poverty? What causes poverty? A lack of knowledge. Fear of self. Lack of knowledge of oneself, right? So I need you to see what's happening. The word Semitic is a trick word. And when if so, and if you ever see it, and all my beautiful people out there in the stream, you need to know this. This is what the word means. They use it every day. But this is what it means. Afro-Asiatic. Thank you. Semitic pertains, a Semitic language pertains to any language that is of Afro-Asiatic origins. So if someone says you're being anti-Semitic, that means you are against African and Asian culture. Amen. Go ahead, ask the question. <laughs> that thing, Kabbalah, uh -huh. that is in the mosque in Mecca. Yes. And like you say, um, it's a tree that you circle around? No. That's, that was something from earlier. I'm going to break this yeah. down. This deals with something called the tree of life. But they circle around that mm -hmm. when they make their hajj. You're thinking about the Kaaba. Yeah, the Kaaba. Okay. Sorry, 3, Slow years. down. Slow down. This means square. That's what you're talking about. Kaaba means square or cube. Kabbalah deals slow down, bro. <laughs> I'm trying to show you what it is, because I study it. You're talking about Kaaba, as in the cube. The Kabbalah teaches about sacred geometry. That's the connection. But the word Kabbalah means to receive. The Kabbalah was given to Abraham by a, from a black man named Melchizedek, who was the king of Salem. He was the king over all of the land of Canaan. The land of Canaan was the land of the Canaanites. The Canaanites are also known as the Phoenicians, from where you get the word phonics. Plus, black people created the living, spoken, as well as written language. So this thing called Kabbalah is your inheritance. Are you see where I'm trying to take you? I'm trying to get you back to something that belongs to you. Because for 400 years, they told you, you should not be reading, you shouldn't know anything, and you definitely better not reconnect back with Africa. Well, how can Philadelphia be based in an ancient Egyptian metaphysical Look like we got to open up the pages, don't we? Can I finish with the case? Yeah. Here we go. Listen. There were there were individual Rosicrucians and sympathizers who greeted the newcomers and urged them to settle in Germantown. 
near Philadelphia. But to fulfill their purpose, the immigrants moved on to higher ground to establish an independent community. For a dozen years, this new settlement and lodge several miles from Philadelphia on a ridge overlooking the Wissahickon Creek was their base of operation, known affectionately, affectionately as the woman in the wilderness. Now, when we got up to the slab, because we went up there, whose name is on the slab? Ma'at. Ma'at represents the laws of the universe, and that's an ancient Nubian goddess. What is the name of a black goddess doing on, on a wall, on a slab, in the middle of Philadelphia? near a cave where a man sat with his, his disciples and chanted. What were they chanting about? What kind of knowledge was they dealing with? Everything they tell us not to. And that's why you keep getting these dreams because your ancestors' knowledge is encoded into the very land itself. These are your ancestors. The Lene, Lenape. They are described as colored tone people copper colored tone people who lived in Pennsylvania, Philadelphia. Yes. Just, just, I just want you to look at this real quick. Okay. I don't want to get the camera. Okay. What is it? No, you can say it. Say it. We don't have to see you. You can say it. They don't see you. <laughs> That's all right. Yeah, I just passed it around. What is it? It's a picture. Oh, it's a picture. Okay. You see the Mother and son. What is this? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Are they yes. known as the Delaware Indians? They also, because this is why they call it the Delaware Valley. All of this, Philadelphia, sections of New Jersey, and sections of Delaware was all one area. It was called Lenape. It was the land of the Lenape. These people were the same complexion as us. No joke. You didn't know that, did you? That there was copper toned, brown skinned people living here thousands of years before any European arrivals. They were called the Lenny Lenape. And you see this, and you see this. Copper tone. They are described in the old dictionaries. A group of copper colored tone indigenous people to the land of America. It's gonna, you're, you're starting to pick up what's going on, aren't you? So, all that rejection of ancient Africa, all that, that let that stuff go. The rejection of our ancestry has been to our detriment. Okay. Everybody in the world is in tune with ancient Africa. Right. This is not to push hate on anything, mm -hmm. but it just seems kind of odd to me being born of African ancestry. Mm -hmm. How for so many years I have said to my people, please, you got to get into the culture. Let's look into it. I didn't force nobody. Just look into it. And they laugh and ridicule you. What with you for being into that African stuff? But this whole city is actually based around ancient Egyptian metaphysics. So how are you going to tell me not to be a part of it? How are they going to tell y'all not to study? Yeah. Somebody's been lying. Yeah, I want you to get back to who you used to be. Somebody's having us walk around in darkness. And that's the weird feeling, not just of Philadelphia, but this whole entire globe right now. You're getting dreams and certain voices are coming to you saying, Go out into the what? Wilderness. Now, the woman in the wilderness is who? Come on, y'all. Let's go into the Bible. I know about a woman in the wilderness. Her name is Hagar. And Hagar had a child named Ishmael. And she was an Egyptian. Called the area when they got to Philadelphia. They said this chapter of the Rosicrucians is the land of the woman and the wilderness, meaning they were running with a baby to try to hold it from being murdered. And what was that baby? The secret science of Africa. Mm. That's what they were running with. And that's why they made sure they had that Egyptian name still surviving in the park. But we so busy and it's so into the world, you don't even get the, the, the actual What's the word? The inheritance. Yeah, that word again. Right. <laughs> I love playing words. Words open up worlds. And if you put an S on the front of words, words, you get sword. And you know, your words can be your what? Swords. Got a double-edged tongue. Right? And the Bible it says that he shall have a tongue like a what? Sword. 
and, and how he's how he's going to use that sword with his what words. words. <laughs> That's the real fight. You want to fight the demons? Learn how to get control over the language. Here we go. Keep going. For a dozen years, this new settlement and lies several miles from Philadelphia on the on a ridge overlooking Wissahickon Creek. What's the ridge? Ridge, ridge Avenue. Avenue. So that meant that this group of people at one time walked through what is Ridge Avenue today. And by, by the way, Ridge Avenue is the longest avenue in the city and in the country. Yes. It runs through everywhere. Yeah. Right. This Ridge Avenue was the route that they took coming in from the docks down there. They walked and remember, none of this was buildings. You got right, this is right, 1600s. Right, right. They moved through the wilderness and found their way to the Wissahickon. But they didn't find nothing. They were what? Shown. Oh. Who showed them? The natives. Because all of this was waterways at one time. So they found a way to walk all the way over till they reached another creek. And that place was the Wissahickon. Several miles from Philadelphia on a ridge overlooking Wissahickon Creek was their base of operation, known affectionately as the Woman in the Wilderness. To Rosicrucians elsewhere, this was a code name for that whole unique project in the New World. Do you know why they said it's a unique project? Because Philadelphia was already in the plan to be built. This is a holograph. We going in. Let's go deeper into history, or should I say, the heritage? Locally, they were called the Rosicrucers and Hermits of the Ridge. Now, the word hermit. The word hermit is a trick word. It's a secret word. You know it. I'll hold it for you. Yeah, please break that down. Okay, yeah. You can see what's in the word. Her. Well, see her first. That's what I do see. Her. Mid. Mid. Let's drop that I. Let's make it an A. Mind. And you know what her really means in, in ancient comedic language, Egyptian language? Ancient Egyptian comedic light. Hence the word Haru. Also connected to the word hero. Those of the light. Mot. Mit. Mot. Truth. Those who study and embrace themselves and truth and light. And when you close yourself into a place long enough and you start going through all your thoughts, eventually you come to find out that 80% of your thoughts is bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> and that's when you come to the truth and light. This is why in the scriptures it says, be still and know that I am. Right. Be still and know that you are. Be still and know that I am God. When you get still enough and you pull and you recluse yourself away for a while, you'll be able to see really what's happening. But as long as everybody's moving all the time and nobody's sitting still and nobody's really observing themselves or their environment, they stay trapped. Stuck. Stuck. That's right, beautiful. That's what all these that's what these little devices are for. Mm -hmm. Keep you distracted. Right. Yeah, I'm, I'm I'm somewhat of a hermit myself. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, I'm not. Um <laughs> Look, I gotta sometime explain these. There's too much to explain sometimes, so I just gotta keep rolling. <laughs> All right, let me keep going because I, I want you to get this. These men were not only adepts in the teachings and revelations of their lodge, each was also educated and expert in some human endeavor a physician, apothecary, astronomy, book binding, clock making. Hold on to that one. That was a key, clock making. Divinator. You know what a divinator is? Someone who studies divination. Someone and divination is a science. It is not hocus pocus. Divination, I'll say it again, is a science. Benjamin Franklin used the the Oriental E King or E Ching to design Philadelphia. He had a game. Of ancient Asian and African metaphysics. In Africa, 
Our ancestor called it the Ifa, right? The 16 cowrie shells. And our ancestors who went over into Asia, later on called it the I Ching. Those are the 64 different hexagrams, the different outcomes of life situations. So we good? Mm -hmm. All right. And many other skills. Near their lives was the first herbarium in Pennsylvania, which imported European herbs used for healing. Now, <laughs> this is the deep part about it. The herbs that we call European herbs not. were not European herbs. If you get the book, African Holistic Health, they let you know that Europe put a ban in a control. Spices, at one time spices were put up there with gold, they were kill over spices. So many of those spices came from Africa and Asia, and majority of them from Africa, all right? I got to put this out there because when I go into the timeline, you're going to see how the ancestors have sped everything up for you to go back into the park. I'm talking about African as well as European ancestry. They have set it up in the park for one day for you to go back and look because this information is stopped and they, they even stopped the, the teaching for 108 years on purpose just to keep it hidden. And this is the year of revelation. Here we go. I'll, I'll, atop the main building or cluster was the first astronomical observatory, which included some rare and treasured instruments, and from which they provided information for an early 18th century American almanac. Stop! Who wrote the first almanac for America? Ah! Is that why they call the realty company Wissahickon and Elephant? Elfont was the man who worked on Washington, D.C. with Benjamin Baddock. Wissahickon Elfont, meaning Benjamin Baddock was a student of Rosicrucian science. Mm -hmm. mm. So it was Thomas Jefferson, so it was Benjamin Franklin, all the rest of them. And in fact, Washington, too? Yes. Particularly Jefferson and Franklin, though. Washington was in the Masonic Lodge, but they went deeper. They went back to the older lodges, and those were found in France and parts of Germany. This is where you get the word Bohemian. Bohemian is someone's name. Oh, it's gosh. Jacob. So they just named everybody that followed him Bohemians. Oh, okay. I'm a Bohemian. I don't know about it. <laughs> right, watch this now. They helped establish churches of several denominations and schools and became teachers, preachers, healers. What? Healers. This is a whole different type of people, isn't it? Sound a lot different from what they told us, right? You ain't supposed to be dealing with no healing and no astrology. Not the people that built this place did. I think it's time for us to go get our tools, what you think? Yeah. So, here we go. They were, we're going back, where were we at, where were we at? Excuse me. They helped establish churches of several denominations and schools became schools and schools became teachers, preachers, healers, and translators, even business managers. As circumstances show the need, while some had shared a dream of an isolated ideal commune and the Essene style they have brought to this new land, this wilderness, that word again much practical expertise that was sorely needed. They were also to serve. Their skills included, here we go, including occult skills were called on for various purposes. Occult. You know, what does the word occult mean? Um, working in something. Anytime y'all hear the word occult, you should think about yourselves. Occult is ruled by black people. I don't care. I will tell the truth. Y'all don't like it? Too bad. Too bad. I mean, because the stuff I'm talking about, they, this is really like, I don't know, you better not tell them that. For years, no, literally, there was, for years, we, we got to remember, we grew up under repression. Right. 
We're the only people on this earth who hate what we see in the mirror. Come on, y'all. Mm -hmm. We talk in second. Black people talk in second and third person about themselves. All the time. The right. African stuff. Well, let me make you very hip to this African stuff. All the most powerful European thinkers of the world are studying that African stuff. Everybody so, want some of that African stuff in a minute. Thank you. So my question is, if the black community is suffering, what is it suffering from? Hatred of self. And the whole city you live in is based upon your ancestors' teachings. Damn. I tell you, checkmate, gosh. A cult. And the word occult means black. Hidden. Yeah. Occult. They used to call things when they want to talk about something being black or hidden, black skin, yeah, I, you know, don't seem so bad no more, do it. No. Black. No, I'm I'm saying because when you say that, I'm just going back to when I was younger, I used to hear that, and, I, and I'm like, well, why is it bad? It's bad because once you learn about it, you won't be their slave. And I mean, I used to ask, and like, you know, I, I'm just saying what you said. Just, me back to when I was younger. I used to hear this a lot, and I'm like, well, why is it bad? Because it empowers, it empowers sums and disempowers others. If you know how to read, if you know how to use the stars, if you know how to use water, earth, wind, water, and fire to heal your body and not be waiting on somebody to do something for you, mm -hmm. then now you are a threat to what? Economic power around the world. This is why they have to for so long they had to keep the world, European colonization and religions, right. had to keep the Africans and the people of the planet in general away from their traditional culture. Culture, that means you got power. Right. If you got knowledge, you got what? Power. A certain power. That's where the phrase physician heal thyself comes from. Africa, in hotel. That's right. Teach now. I need to hear that. Here we go. One detailed account that survived relates how Matthias, a latecomer who came to Philadelphia, where we at? and the second and last leader of the chapter, when he was besieged by the wife of a long missing sea captain, was able to locate and interview her husband at the very hour in a London coffee house. Stop. There's two London coffee houses, one in London and one in Philadelphia. The London Coffee House in Philadelphia was used to house and sell slaves, Africans. The other London Coffee House was the place where they left from and docked off of. The second place that had the highest level of enslavement was England. Okay? King James enslaved more people, more black people than you can count. They had a piece of money in England called the guinea. The word guinea means gold. You know what another word for guinea is? African. Right. So in his mind, you have always been stock. You have always been gold. You have always been money. You existed before money in America. Yeah. You are the money of America. Yeah. So how the hell you broke? Right. Why you broke? Why you broke? There you go, Elder. Right. Are we here now? We got to let the world know. They got to wake up. Wake up time, y'all. This is Sunday. They going to wake up on this Sunday with this. <laughs> yes, yes. Now listen to this. I'll read it again. Leader of the chapter, when he was besieged by a wife, by the wife of a long missing sea captain, was able to locate and interview her husband at the very hour in a London coffee house by the technique known as traveling clairvoyance. Y'all like watching movies, right? Listen for that term. Tra Wait a minute. This is deep. Traveling, I hope I spelled it right. I like I like writing on the board for a reason, so we can all look at the words together. Traveling, clear, voyance. How many people ever watched the movie Pirates of the Caribbean? Yeah, yeah. Come yeah, on, sisters. Hey, brother, yeah, yeah. this this y'all gonna have to get the movie after this yeah. one. Oh. I, 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 I see this yeah. piece of it. Yeah. Yeah. 
Do you remember this part in the movie? This one. Second one, or first one. In the movie, Jack, what's the name? Pirate Jack Black, something like that? Okay, Jack Black, something like that. And so, <laughs> Jack Black, Pirate Black, Blackbeard, whatever, more. Right, right. Okay. He goes into a ship and he goes to find. Please help me, ma'am. I'm trying to locate a certain group of people and I'm trying to get answers on something. So the black woman goes into, she gets a pendulum. She has a whole circle, a dial around her, and she starts asking questions, and she finds some of the answers. That is what you call pendulum dowsing and divination. Traveling clairvoyance is when you help people go into dream states to find answers. Mm. Does this sound like something that the Catholic Church wants to see you doing? No. No. Sound like something no. that Africans do to me, doesn't it? Right. Because all of this mystic art is from you. They just had to erase your names. But you couldn't erase the time history. You couldn't erase the time factor. The time factor, see, they try to erase names or they erase the name. They keep the name, but they erase the face. So you'll hear one of our names, but you never know they were talking about a black person. Okay. The only reason why you know Benjamin Banneker is black because somebody made a picture. Yeah. But by the name, and they don't call him Banneker, they call him Banneker. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. because they, they Europeanized his last name because his last name is African. It's the name of a chief, but African king and chief who's from Mali. So you see how, the, see how the game is being played? So they take your name so that if you don't have your name, you don't have your identity. Right. So now you could be looking at yourself and don't even know it. This is why we seek love for all and hate for what? Knowledge. Yeah. Knowledge is knowledge. Mm -hmm. When the captain did return, as Matthias foretold, the recognized Matthias as the man who had talked with them in London on the earlier day had confirmed all that Matthias had reported to his distressed wife. Okay, moving on. In time, this group became scattered. Some were absorbed into the life affairs of nearby Philadelphia. Some died, some moved farther west with other pioneers. Their large building for a time was put to other use, finally abandoned. Here it is. Of the original settlement, only one small building remains. This is where we went. Today, a masonry cubicle with an arched roof built into the hillside with young Johannes Kelpius used as his private quarters and retreat. This once remote area is now at the edge of Upper Fairmount Park within the city of Philadelphia. It is called the Kelpius Cave. It's marked by a monument placed there by his present day large brothers and sisters, the Rosicrucian Order of Amork, ancient mystic order of the Rosicrucians community. We went there and we had, and I, I was sitting there and I actually you know I meditated and prayed. And you can go on our website and see us walk through the cave and everything and sit down. The cave is built, and I finally kept researching and studying. If you sing inside the cave or if you pray very hard and you start chanting inside the cave very hard, you will actually feel the vibration of your voice come back to your body. Oh, wow. So the place was designed to be an actual acoustic healing chamber. I'm going to pass around pictures. So I'm going to skip some of this. They later on went into Ephrata, PA, the woman in the wilderness. Now, who was the woman in the wilderness? Hagar. Hagar. And Hagar is what nationality was Hagar? Egyptian. And what's another word for Egyptian? Thank you. We keep it real simple. <laughs> Gay African. See how many connect? Oh, well, there's a whole song and poem they wrote about how she was going to knock off her chains, how she was going to lift up the lamp with light. I have the whole song in here about Lady Liberty, the woman in the wilderness, who's going to free herself from the bondage of the world. Is that why Philadelphia was the first place where slavery had to end? Yes, because another name for Philadelphia was supposed to be New Jerusalem. They called it, where they went to, Ephrata, I'm, I'm losing ink, y'all, PA. Another word, Ephrata was the original name for Jerusalem. 
Ephraim of PA, Jerusalem, New Jersey, New Jerusalem, New York, 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 the new city, the new kingdom, the new world. Hmm? Let me, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna skip some things. Because it's, it's not that it's not important. <laughs> It's just that I want to get to major points. Okay, I have to, now I know where I got it. So now, we've been we're talking about Rosicrucians, right? Mm -hmm. This is what's in the this is what's in the, the magazines. Yeah, I I've seen it since I was. She didn't need you. Yeah, because the Rosicrucian order has its origin in Egypt. Yeah, right. So, you wouldn't allow me to read for 300, 400 years. You told me that my skin color was cursed. And now I got to dig deep, dig deep into all this mental garbage, spiritual muckery, right? <laughs> and come to the realization that the revelation that we've been feeling in our hearts, that something else is more to us besides what you've been saying. Is what's really going on and all that hatred because you know they talk about it how when the rosicrucians first started just like many of us when we question and bring out the real occult i'm not that stuff in here yeah 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 right you heard these yeah. terms before yeah. what you mean with that old black stuff yeah, like oh, devil stuff. Stuff. that devil stuff that's another one the devil yeah. stuff right that's one of the main ones but all of the most, like I keep saying, the most substantial knowledge that has been learned all has ancient African roots to it. And the people who founded this city was dealing with that knowledge. I can't say it enough. So know that this is your time. The revelation and the dreams that you're getting is coming from the ancients telling you, leave and go to the wilderness. They mentioned a group of people in this thing called the Essenes. The person you call Jesus, Yahshua, yeah. was a part of the, the order of the Essenes. Man, I got a lot of years to catch up on. I'm trying to put in 25,000 years of history in, the, in three hours. Lord, have mercy, I'm a bad boy. Yes, there we are. go. <laughs> this is for all of you out there. The Essenes also were known by another name, right? African. That too. But I'll give you all their names, Chris. <laughs> the therapeutes. For when you get the word therapeutic. Thank you. Therapy. They were the therapeutes. The word therapeute means healer. They were the original therapists. This was the Greek terms. Right? Now, do you want to hear their names in the Bible? Go ahead. Oh. Nazarites. Wow. The Essenes or the Nazarites or the Therapeutes were a group of <laughs> this word, I hate this word, but I have to use it. Semitic group of people, a group of Africa Asiatic people who studied the Egyptian mystery systems and had kept the ancient Egyptian sciences still within the teachings of the Kabbalah and the Holy Scriptures and were able to utilize this knowledge at any time they needed to to help people heal, to find out certain things about their birth date. Oh, nah. These were the Essenes, the Nazarites. That's the type of power that they had. You can trace back the Nazarites, the Essenes, or the Therapeutes back to the ancient Egyptian order. In fact, it says in the book of Matthew, my son wax wise I called my son out of what land? Egypt. Egypt. Jesus was born in Bethlehem. But where did they save him? Egypt. Egypt. So are you telling me that the son of man, the savior of the world, was living and walking around the pyramids? And he waxed wives in Egypt? That's all in the Bible. I thought the Egyptians were bad people. What are, you, what, what are we doing here? Uh, 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 I'm sorry. I thought they were sun worshipers. Well, they worship animals. You, you see, I gotta undo. I gotta undo this thing. I gotta unravel it for you. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
I, I was so happy for a while, but she said, could these people mm -hmm. bring people back from the dead? Yes. That's all I want to know. I'll be right back. I got the wrong. I'm sorry. Thank you. <laughs> and that, that's symbolically as well as on the spiritual. When you say dead, what do you mean? Yeah, really, because you, it's just a spirit leaving. Right. Now, how about somebody that's so terminally sick that they're on their deathbed and all of a sudden they eyes open? Back then, that seemed like a miracle. Today, you say what? That's recitation. Yeah, Who do you think came up with CPR? <gasps> yeah, you guys. In the end of days, you will be brought back to the knowledge of what? Who and what you are. So you For the world to be saved, Africans got to wake up. I don't care who don't like me for saying it. If I got to walk a thousand years in darkness again to find you again, I will come and find you and I will tell you. But the days of darkness is over with. Accept yourselves. Accept them dreams. Accept that, that journey you want, whatever your journey is. Some people may be journeying to be the best writer. But find out how that's connected to your dreams and who you are, whatever it is. Somebody want to make a statement. The word Nazarite meat now, okay. I kept touching my hair for a reason. The word Nazar. This is why we don't cut out here. Or when we do, it's usually a purification. Mm -hmm. The yeah. Nazar, right? The word Nazar means crowd. The Nazarites never cut their hair, nor the edges of their beards. That's why all the pictures you see of men and women who deal with spirituality in the ancient world, you usually see the hair is wrapped up, right? Or they have real long hair in those ancient pictures in Asia and Africa. That's because the Nazarites didn't cut their hair. Ancient Egyptian priesthood that survived among what we call the Israelites. The tribe of Judah is an African tribe, and I dare any of them to battle me. I will write in this book and show them how the mother of the tribe of Judah is an African Canaanite. End of discussion. End of discussion. All these. Gone. Gone. That's why I don't even get into half these people's conversations. A lot of times I hear conversations, I got to put my head down. <laughs> I just laugh inside and say, this is simple. Only people who really don't study, make, and the statements that they make is like, no substantial evidence. When I come to class, I got I can't just come out here just talking. You see how big this stack of papers is? Blessings. Thank you all. Thank you. Yes. So... I'm going to go in, drop one more back in jewel. I think we're going to get on with the rest of this. Y'all ready? All right. Yo, hold on, hold on. Before y'all jet, write down um, any contact information so we can let you know when we're doing it again. Um, we have a book. You can write it in. Any contact. All right. What I miss, man? Name is done. All right. You didn't miss anything. That was heavy, but... Uh, like you said, because when 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 I was in Egypt, and I saw a lot. I'm up in twice. Uh, gotcha. All right. All right. Yeah, no problem. First time I went with my mother, and we went in the pyramids, and I when I and I got into the center of the pyramid, I cried, and and I. Hugged my mother, and that uh, her and I were weeping at it, but the, the her vibe was so strong, it was like I was back home. I mean, I was in a wound or something, man. It, it was a strange feeling. You know what I'm saying? You yeah, know, it was it was you coming back to yourself. Yeah. When you looked on the walls, you seen all the faces. Wow, right? man. The, 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 well, like the Egyptians. The pale but, um, Egyptian kept on saying Egyptian and all, all this, but really what he was saying is that 
I'm the original Egyptian, and I'm looking on the wall, and they look like me. Right. And I said, they are the real Egyptians. I said, you are a invader. Right. And when I, and I said hey, that, <laughs> they, they, they didn't get it. That's right. No. You have the, the, the sparks is flying, right? Yeah, because sometimes when you say something, it just resonates just to a certain thing that I'm like, wait a minute, hold on. I know okay, I heard it. yeah, here we go. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. From the laws. I'm only going to read from laws. That means anything I say, I back it up. This is, this is, I guess this is African spiritual court, African metaphysical court. So, therefore, if you come to court, you got to have your documents. All right? Yes, you do. All right. Here we go. The Mystery Schools and the Rosicrucian Order. A M O R C. And we played with that word already, right? I love you too. Right. That's the first thing I think. <laughs> right. I love you too, Morris. I love you so much. Thank you. Mm. I ain't never think about breaking it down that way. But A I'm more means love. Yeah. Yeah. Mork is more. And if you go this way, it's Moroccan. Oh wow. Oh wow. <laughs> the mystery schools and the Rosicrucian order are work. Julian Scott, Julie Scott, SRC. Listen, the mystery schools were centers of study and mystic initiation. And the ancient Western world, where the mysteries of the universe, of nature, and of humanity were explored. These spiritual centers educated students in natural laws and principles so they could better live in harmony with them. Okay? Encouraged introspection in order to know oneself better and engender within a feeling of connection with the great mystery of the universe. You, you add a little more to that, that's America. Need I say more? Mm. Mm. I told you that I didn't read all of the document. There's more to the document about the whole planet of Philadelphia. Francis Bacon, William I Shakespeare. That, I ain't heard that name in a lot Francis of time. Bacon and William Shakespeare. So supposedly they are the same person. Yeah, you've been yeah, saying yeah, that for a good little while now. Yeah. If you look up any information like the books, um, I've seen that book. Come on, Manly P. Hall. Uh, Manly P. Hall. I don't know the name of the book. Why, 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 why? Memory going bad. Oh, Manly P. Hall. And the name of the book is um, Greatest Mysteries or something of that nature. Um, I, I, but the name of the author is Manly P. Hall. Okay. Okay. And his books, he breaks down and he shows how Sir Francis Bacon is supposedly William Shakespeare. Okay. Yeah. So. Another story. Encourage intros introspection in order to know oneself better and engender within a feeling. Many of the traditions of these ancient mystery schools and the philosophies that sprang from them. And this article, Grand Master Julie Scott, leads us on a journey through these aspiring ancient sources to Rosicrucianism today. Each of these traditions described below has been the focus of one of the past 16 issues of the Rosicrucian papers. Okay, I'm going to get out of this because this will take a thousand years to go into. I'm going year by year. The history and timeline of the Rosicrucian order. They start off with Plato, who describes a place called Atlantis. So they try to say Atlantis. Atlantis is not the place. Right. Atlantis is nothing but another way of saying America. <laughs> uh, I love when people make stuff up. You just try to make up some stuff, right? A lot. Yeah, which yeah, Atlantis comes from the word Utlan. Atlan, Utlan. And the Utlan was inhabited by a group of people called the Tulan. This is in the book, The Mayan Prophecies, The Book of All. 
And the Pope of all, which is a Mayan holy book, they say that the Tulan came from the east. And the way that the book reads, it says that our brothers from the east traveled and settled here in this land and began the civilization here. The east of ancient Mayan, of the Mayan civilization, the Olmecs, east would be what direction? You would be going towards what country, what continent? Africa. Now, Africa. So when they say that their brothers, the Tulan, came from the east, they're letting you know that the original inhabitants of ancient Mexico, South America, right. and those places, came out of Africa. That has to be because I got I this tape called um, um, Colors of Mexico or um, um, something like that, and it was talking about how the uh, blacks, thousands of years, they went there, mm -hmm. and then how they eventually changed their shade from um, the um, Spanish from um, like, the invasion the of the Spanish, Spanish All right. you know, like change their color and they like lighter than that. I'm like, hmm? right. between the two groups yes. coming together, yes. like, their skin color changed because of their mating. And they don't talk about the darkness. No, that again, we are always dealing with racism and suppression, right? And that suppression is what creates the destruction on the planet. Mm -hmm. The actual timeline is, I, and I'm going to abbreviate some of this because I can see where they put stuff in that don't make no sense. According to the primordial tradition, the Atlanteans chose Egypt as the place to lay the foundation for what was to become the cultural and spiritual home of newborn antiquity. You can tell they played with that one, didn't they? Yeah, <laughs> to try to try to make you think like they went there and they were really right they were already there. the same they people, were, the yeah, same place. Were, Already there already. Here's where they, they 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 cover it up, and now you see they start saying, "Okay, we can't say that, so we gotta we gotta put some else in here." Wordplay. Like Wordplay. Dynastic Egypt from around 3000 to 30, 30 the thir year thirty BCE before Common Era. Okay, y'all know what I say BCE means before Caucasian era, before Ooh, the confusion. I like that. Before the confusion. Whenever I see the word BC, I see before confusion. Okay. And when I see AD, I see after domination. Because before the confusion, you knew who you were. Yeah, you were chilling. After the defeat, lost. I don't know who you were. You didn't know what was going on anymore. Confused. You woke up in a country and said, how did I get here? All I know is I'm on the field and I'm up here swinging an axe. But, 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 <laughs> but, 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 but it's funny that you say like that because like, when I tell people I'm like, if I ever like, I do, when I do go to Africa, I don't think I'm going to come back. And my mom's like, you really feel like that? I say, yeah. I don't feel like I'm supposed to be here. Oh, you're supposed to be here. Yes. But I don't, I don't, no. but I don't feel like please. it though. Listen to what I'm saying. I'm, I'm, that's where I'm coming so to. Then, yeah. We are under an actual spell. Go ahead. Uh, uh, what we call a psychic trauma is a psychic traumatic spell. It's a stealing of memories and the creation of false memories. Okay. Now, I am not saying that our enslavement was false. Please, please. I'm not saying that at all. Right. But what I am saying is that how we perceive what happened and who we are, okay. that's false. Okay. All right. I understand you. You got it now? Yeah. See, there's a reason why everything happens for a reason. Yeah. There's a reason why we're here. Yeah. Because all this great new world can't come about without you. And True. everyone knows it. Right. You are the woman in the wilderness. We are the children of the woman who's in the wilderness running with the baby. And this baby is on its way to be murdered by ignorance. We are also those children who ran literally in the wilderness from dogs. And while all the time we're running from dogs in the wilderness, our ancestral names and our ancestral knowledge is being locked away behind closed doors. And they looking it up like no. And know problem. that it was you for the whole time. See, that's why the ancestors of the ancestors are fighting for our consciousness. They come to you in sounds, they come to you in light color codes, they come to you to dreams, they come to you through your through your conscious words, through certain feelings and urges that you have, and they're saying, please fulfill one. You'll know which one it is when it's right, because there will be a reward after. All that which is secret is sacred, and, and there's a reason why it's sacred. 
It belongs to you. And to king of Egypt was chosen from among the so-called and organized the mystery schools together as, as a single order. His great-grandson Akhenaten was responsible for introducing monotheism to the world. After that, Alexander, the ingrate conquest of 332 BCE, Egyptian culture and spirituality blended with Greek Hellenism and was highly influential throughout the Mediterranean. Through many historical paths, this ancient tradition finds a modern Where do the Rosicrucian order and science come from? Egypt. And what's another name for Egypt? Kemet. Kemet. And we can call the whole region Ethiopia. Ethiopia, or let's just use the word. Oh. Oh. Yeah. You ain't got to get that, that, that easy deep. All right. But I'm going to keep going, baby. <laughs> So I can keep going on and on. So basically, my whole point is that this, this city is based on ancient African science and philosophies. Right. Thank you, brother. Ancient African science and philosophies. Peace. That's what this whole thing is based on. All right? So go out there in the wilderness. Go get your spiritual books and get into your studies. One love on that. All right? I know it's getting late, but let's see what time we got. Anybody got a time, got a time check? Um, four, 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 four. All right, I'll put a couple more minutes in and we're going to wrap this All up. Right. So I'm just going to say the years. From the 2nd century BCE to 100 was the order of the Aesians. Still ancient Egyptian orders. Then you have the Orphic Mysteries. That's the Egyptian Mysteries taught in Greece. Then you have the Delphic Mysteries. That's the Egyptian mysteries taught in Greece again from the year 1700 BCE to 391 CE. Then you have the Pythagorean school, the Eleusian school, which was the teachings of Osiris, the Egyptian mysteries, the Metharic school, the Hermetic school, Gnostic school, Neoplatonic school, <laughs> the Kabbalah. Then you have the alchemical school, and that's all the way up to today. That is the history of secret societies. That is the origin of the Rosicrucian order. And they brought that science to this city and inscribed it in the buildings. World will wake up to the ancient sciences once more to heal themselves. We being descendants directly of ancient Africa, ancient Kemet, Egypt, Nubia, Songhai, Mali, right? Ghana, Yoruba land, Zulu, right? Bantu. We can keep going. We'll keep going with all the tribes, right? <laughs> the Twa, we can keep going to Kong, right? Hutu, Rwandan, and go all the way over and go up, and we become the Nubians again, go to the east, go on further. We're the Hindus Kushite, the Harappan civilization, right? The Kung of China. The Melanesian people of the of the Philippines and of the islands in the Pacific. Um, I got a lot of Philippines in my family. Mm -hmm. I got a lot of a lot of my cousins married Philippine girls. Mm -hmm. You know, to, you know, this is your knowledge. Yeah, right. You know. It's your ancestry. You are the ancient Kemet. This city was set up by people who were students of the ancient Egyptian mysteries. That's why they left their card and they left the hieroglyphs and the slabs near the parks so that the young, the youth, and the children of today who are getting these dreams, who are getting these revelations, can be ready to receive the revelation. But, but, but I was, but, 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 but like, I'm from like around Master Street and I moved up here. But like we used to go up to Fern Park and Fern, I mean, um, 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 Wissahickon Park and all that stuff and all that. But um, I want to go and and I'd have probably passed this place, right. the, I mean, a hundred times, but but like not knowing. Um, um, I did know, and it's strange going to Catholic school. Matter of fact, I went to that Catholic school over there, at St. Stephen's, and a lot of, you know. 
but um, uh, um, uh, they used to tell us about the different rivers, what well, they meant. Mm -hmm. Why the subway system have those names like Susquehanna and all this and all that, you know. Those are tribes. Yeah, 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 like tribes. And I've been um, um, doing, doing a lot of research, and I went down to the Missahana car here on Broad Street, and I checked out some four pillars in the walkway, the African, the, the uh, African, the Chinese, the Indian, and the Spanish holding up them four beams and all that stuff, mm -hmm. you know. No, but um, this, this, this here has been very, very enlightening, and I'm going to keep coming back to that, you know, you know, that, that's why I'm always coming through here to, to get it, it retakes, man, but you got a lot going on. Is that that, um, that's the uh, African power that have the black um, uh, um, faces and everything in it? Yes, it is. All right. Did you, how much is that? My, 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 my mother got it, but she won't let me touch it. <laughs> All right. For those who are still out there watching, because I know we're streaming, he's referring to the original African Heritage Bible. And this is the Bible that goes into the African origins of the various tribes and nations that are here and all the different tribes and nations as, as a whole that's here. And they got maps, and they also go over the original... Very good book. Very good breakdown of the Bible. And this is the you need the price. And it's fifty dollars, bro. There's another one right here. You can't open this plastic around here too, so they seal. Oh, and if you want to see what book that is, I'll give you mine. Here. Mine is an original African heritage Bible. Oh yeah. Oh, all right, Jen. You can look at mine. Yeah. All right, then put that that's what I'm gonna do. Pass it to him when you finish. That's the buy that's it right there. So oh, right. You, oh, okay, okay, let's see. As soon as you open the book. Yeah. All right. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm, 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 i am 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 i I got so many Bibles that I had found um, in my travels. All right. Um, man. Hey, Mel, one five for the, if you getting that? Yeah. Hey, Levi. Yeah. What's he have to say about Janet? Who? Who's that? What is that? Who is that? Um, I got some people from Africa yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> got some good 
this is a beautiful day. I went in. Yeah. Did you catch? Man, you see how much stuff? I've been studying that all night, man. I got it dropped as a package. Just, I had to go into the, the archives even find like they they was they, was, they kept coming to me. Are you finished with those? Are you finished with those? I was like, oh, hey, am I finished? I'm fine. Are you finished? Let me, let me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, this is the other. This is it. This is the right over, right over. Yeah, this is the